Oxford English for Careers Nursing 1 Students' Book by Tony Grice Published and copyright Oxford University Press 2007 Unit 1 Scrub Up 1 Scrub Nurse 2 Cardiologist 3 Receptionist 4 Surgeon 5 Physiotherapist 6 Radiologist 7 Consultant 8 Anaesthetist 9 Pediatrician 10 Porter Unit 1 Listening 1 An admission 1 Can you hear me? Mrs Benson? Yes Where am I? What happened? You're in my ambulance. You've had a fall and we're taking you to hospital. Yes. Now I remember. Two. Right, Mrs. Benson. We're going to have a closer look at your heart. Have you had an x-ray before? Yes. I broke my leg once. Three. Hello, Mrs. Benson. How do you feel? Terrible. I've got a terrible headache. And I need to use the toilet. OK. I'll draw the curtains and you can use a bedpan. Dr. Bright is coming to have a look at you in a moment. Four. Mrs. Benson, we've been worried about you. But I've got good news. The X-ray shows your heart is clear, and Sister says your blood pressure is back to normal. How are you feeling? I feel fine now. Good. I'm going to prescribe some medicine, and I'm discharging you. Five. Right, Mrs. Benson. So you want to make an outpatient's appointment for next week? Uh, yes, please. Thursday at four? Fine. Good. Next Thursday at four o'clock to see Dr. Lee in outpatients. Unit one. Listening two. A job interview. OK, Rachel. Let's start the interview with a few questions. Your CV says that you're working at City Hospital. Yes, in the operating theatres. Are you a fully qualified scrub nurse? Not yet. At the moment, I'm doing a part-time course and working at the same time. I'm preparing for the exams, which are next month. It's hard, especially when I'm working a night shift and going to lectures next day. Hmm. Tell us about your job. Mm -hmm. What do you do every day? Well, I assist the surgeons. I prepare the instruments for surgery and I help with the operations. What do you like best about being a scrub nurse? Well, I like watching operations, but it's the contact with the patients that's most rewarding. So why are you applying for a new job? Well, I'm very happy in my job, but I want more responsibility. Unit 2. Pronunciation. 1. Cardiology. 2. Pharmacy. 3. Gynaecology. 4. Neurology. 5. Obstetrics. 6. Orthopaedics. 7. 
Pediatrics. 8. Pathology. 9. Dermatology. 10. Physiotherapy. 11. Renal unit. 12. Surgery. Unit 2. Listening 1. Directions 1. Go out of here and the door you want is just opposite. Go in through the door and give your prescription to the man behind the counter. So it's just outside here? Yes, just across the corridor. 2. Go into the hospital through these swing doors. Go along the corridor, take the first right, and it's the second door on your left. Through the swing doors, down the corridor, first right, second left. That's it. Thanks. Three. Go along this corridor and turn left at the end. Go along the next corridor, take the second left, and go all the way along that corridor. The ward you want is right at the end, straight in front of you. Thank you. Unit 2. Listening 2. The Porter's Office. Sure, right away. Hello, Wahid. Are you there? Uh, yes. Where are you? I'm at the top of the stairs outside physiotherapy. OK. Can you go across the hospital to the stores and collect a box of disposable syringes and take them to the path lab? And also a wheelchair. Box of syringes and a wheelchair. OK. Porter's office? Yes, Dr. Syed. I'll do that. Hello, Brian? I'm here. Dr. Syed from Cardiology wants a porter. They've got a lot of empty bottles. Can you take them to the bins? Where are they? Outside Cardiology, near the swing doors on the main corridor. And then take a stretcher to Ward 4, collect a patient and take him to radiology. <sighs> Hello, Porter's office. Unit 3. Scrub up. 1. I was at a party and one of my friends gave me a little white tablet. I'd had a few drinks and I was feeling good and I took it, even though I didn't know what it was. It made me feel, like, really weird. I could see and hear really strange things and it scared me. I still don't feel normal today and I'm very worried. Two. It's not due until next month, but when I was washing up this morning, there was a little blood. It worried me. Then I got these paints. Three. I was working high up on a ladder. My foot slipped and I fell. I hit my head, but there is no blood and I don't feel too bad. Four. I was walking by the river and I think I stepped on it, and it bit me. I don't know what type it was, but it was long and silver, with a black head. Five. I was looking in the mirror, and I saw this big spot on my face. I checked it on the internet, and I'm sure I've got cancer. Do you think I'm going to die? Unit three. Listening. A patient record form. Mustafa, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So, what happened to you? 
I was working on a ladder. It was raining and I slipped and fell. Did you hit your head? Uh, yes, I saw stars and felt sick at first. But now it's okay. I see. You may have concussion. First, I'll take down your details and fill in this form. So, what's your surname? It's Hussein. Can you spell that for me? H U double -S, S E I N. What's your occupation? I'm a painter. Right. What's your date of birth? First of the ninth, eighty two. One nine eighty two. And where were you born? Karachi, Pakistan. What's your marital status? Sorry? Are you married? Uh, no, I am single. And do you have a contact telephone number for your next of kin? O double seven O nine four O one double two nine. It's my brother Yusuf. Do you smoke? Yes. How many do you smoke a day? Twenty a day. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you drink? No. Right. Are you allergic to anything? No. Now, family history. Do any of your close family suffer from any of the following? Mental illness? Uh, no. Diabetes? My mother's parents are both diabetic. Maternal grandparents? Diabetes. Tuberculosis? Uh, no. HIV AIDS? No. Unit 4. Listening. Instructions. Roger, Oscar, Lima, Charlie, we're with the patient now. Possible cardiac arrest. Stand by. Over. Nurse, check his pulse. There's no pulse. Okay. He's not breathing. It is a cardiac arrest. Give him CPR. I'll talk you through it, okay? Okay. Give him mouth-to-mouth -mouth first. Support his head. That's it. Lift it back. Right. Hold his nose closed, then open his mouth and breathe strongly into it. Give two full breaths into his mouth, okay? Right. Let his chest fall again. Nothing? Nothing. Turn his head. That's right. Put your hand on his chest. Now, put your other hand on top of your first hand, okay? Okay. Push down a little and release. Do it again. One, two, three, four. How many times should I do it? Repeat the procedure 15 times. Okay, check his pulse again. Anything? No, still no pulse. Okay, don't wait. Use the AED. Set it at a charge of 200. Right, it's 200. Apply the pads to his chest. Where do I put them? Put one above the heart and one below. Stand clear of his body. Make sure you don't touch him. Call everybody clear and then press the buttons and hold for two seconds, okay? Okay. Everybody clear! Check his pulse again. Nothing. Are you sure? Yes. There's no pulse. Okay. Repeat the procedure. Same charge, 200. Right. Everybody clear? <laughs> ah, there's a pulse. Good. Well done. Now set up an IV and give him lidocaine. How much shall I give him? 100 mil over two minutes. Unit 5. Listening 1. A pain chart. 1. How are you today, Kath? Are you still in pain? Well, there's pain around my stomach. It's quite bad. What kind of pain is it? It's a burning pain. Do you always have it? 
It never goes away. Never. Is it getting worse? No, it's staying about the same. Two. How's the pain today, Emir? It's much better, thanks. I have a slight pain just here in my right side, but it's a lot less painful than yesterday. How often do you get the pain? Only every now and again. It comes and goes. Three. Do you still have a headache? Yes, I've got this throbbing pain in my head. Whereabouts? In the forehead, right between my eyes. Does it feel the same all the time? No, it changes. Sometimes it's not too bad, but it gets a bit worse at night. And it's getting more severe now, is it? A little bit, yes. I'll get you some painkillers. Four. So you're having pains in your arm? Yes, I keep getting this terrible pain down my left arm. It starts at the shoulder and shoots down to my hand. Is this all the time? No, but most of the time. But it's agonizing when it happens. When did this start? It started yesterday, but it's much more severe today. Hmm. We'd better take a look. Unit 5. Listening to Pain Relief. Hello. My name's Janice. Hello, Janice. I'm Karen. Oh, hi, Karen. Boy or girl? A boy. And yours? A girl. Oh, lovely. I think we gave birth at the same time last night, didn't we? Yes. I heard you. Was I making so much noise? <laughs> well, it was the pain. Didn't you have any pain relief? Oh, yes. I had just gas and air at first. It does relieve the pain a bit, but the effect wears off very quickly. Mm. It makes you feel so light-headed if you have too much. It made me feel sick, too. Oh. Anyway, when the pain became unbearable, I had an epidural. Did that help you cope with the pain? It took away the pain completely. My whole lower half went numb. It was great. How about you? This was my third, so the pain was easier to bear. Oh. I did breathing exercises. I decided to have gas and air if the pain got worse, mm -hmm. but I didn't need it. I had an epidural last time, but I didn't like losing all sensation. This time, I wanted to feel the birth. I'm sorry, Janice. I think you must be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Unit 5. Pronunciation. Air, care, first, ulcer, hurt, nurse, hair, worse, doctor, appointment, tumour, where? Unit 6. Scrub up. Diarrhea. Nausea. Cough. Numbness. Aching. Bruising. Tiredness. Unit 6. Listening 1. Symptoms 1. How does it feel? A little deformed, isn't it? Yes. There's a huge lump just above the ankle. And there's quite a lot of bruising. And just here, ah, uh, it's very swollen. Is it painful when you move it? Yes, very. Can you move your toes? It's difficult. They're numb. I can't feel them at all. Two. How are you feeling? 
I feel so hot. What does the thermometer say? Yes, you do have fever. Your temperature is a little over 38. Have you got a sore throat? Yes, it hurts when I talk. I can see you have spots. Any redness? Yes, my chest and back are all red. And do you feel tired? Yes, constant tiredness. And my legs feel achy too. Three. How is it going? I'll be glad when this is over. Doing anything is really tiring. Oh dear. Do you feel dizzy at all? Yes, some days I feel dizzy and sometimes sick. When do you feel sick mostly? In the mornings. And I'm very constipated. Haven't been to the toilet for three days. Sorry to moan. That's all right. We all need a good moan sometimes. What about pain? No, no pain. Unit 6. Language spot. 1. OK, Mrs Hales? Not too bad, thanks. What happened to you? I had a fall. Where does it hurt? From my wrist to my elbow. What about your shoulder? That's fine. Let's have a look. Swollen, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, isn't it? You've had an x-ray, haven't you? Yes, I have. Anything broken? No, just bruising. You aren't on any other medication, are you? No, I'm not. Two. How are you feeling? Not bad, thanks. A bit sore. What happened to you? I fell off my bike. Where does it hurt? Here, around my wrist. Can you move your fingers? Yes, I can, slowly. Is it painful? Yes, very. I've also got a cut on my leg, look. Oh, that's deep, isn't it? Yes, it is deep. Will I need stitches? Maybe. Have you had stitches before? No, never. And I don't want any. You've seen the doctor, haven't you? No, I haven't seen him yet. Unit 6. Listening 2. A helpline call. National Healthline, how can I help? Oh, hello. It's my little boy. He's seven. I'm worried because he's got a terrible cough. OK. So, can you describe the cough? I mean, does he wheeze when he coughs? Yes, he does. Does he wheeze when he breathes in or when he breathes out? Hmm. When he breathes in, yes. Not when he breathes out. When he coughs? Does he cough up any blood? No, but sometimes when he coughs, he vomits. I see. Does he have any allergies? No, I don't think so. Right. Does he have a fever? Have you taken his temperature? Yes, he's burning. The thermometer says 37 degrees. Unit 7. Listening 1. A care home. Right, ladies. Bingo's about to start. And that nurse, Barbara. I don't like her. Shh, Edith. She'll hear you. I don't care if she hears me, Betty. She speaks to me like a child. That's a lovely jumper you're wearing, Edith. Don't you look pretty? She should call me Mrs Taylor, thank you very much. No respect, you see. And she comes into my room without knocking. You've got no privacy, no self-respect. Oh, cheer up. Let's go over and play some bingo. Bingo? Mm. I'm not interested in playing bingo with a group of old ladies. It's not very stimulating, is it? They're all so slow because they've got nothing to keep their minds busy. And their medication slows them up some more. They just sit in front of the television all day. Are you coming on the trip to the seaside next week? No. I don't like coach trips. I just want to go home. 
I miss my independence. I miss my kitchen. And that's another thing. I don't like the food here. Yes, but we don't have to cook or do the washing ourselves. I like this care home. It's clean, the staff are very professional, and it's nice to know there's someone near in an emergency. And there's always someone to talk to. I'm never lonely. Well, I don't want some young nurse telling me what I can and cannot do. I want children around me. It's not natural living like this. Everybody here is old. Unit 7. Language spot. 2. Will you pass me my glasses? Then I'll be able to see the television. Uh, here you are. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, and will you do me another favour? What now? Will you help me stand up? I, I want to switch it on. You'll probably fall over. Uh, I'll do it. Thank you. I won't trouble you again. Unit 7. Listening 2. Assessing a patient. Your mom is going to be fine. There are no bones broken. Oh, that's good news. I was worried because she's a bit frail. Is that the first time she's had a fall? Yes, it is. I'm doing an assessment of her, so I've got some questions. Can you help me with them? Of course. Go ahead. Right. Number one. How is your mother's hearing? Does she wear a hearing aid? Yes. She is very deaf. Without her hearing aid, she hears nothing at all. OK. Um, can she see OK? With glasses, yes. Very well, for her age. Right. Mobility? Are her movements very restricted? Well, she needs help getting dressed and getting in and out of the bath. She has a walking stick and she's very independent. But some days she gets dizzy and can be unsteady on her feet. She uses a scooter for shopping. The next question is about the sleeping habits. Does she have any sleep disorders? She has a lot of problems. She often wakes up in the middle of the night. Sometimes she can't sleep at all. She takes sleeping pills, and of course she has a nap every now and then during the day. OK. Any problems eating? Can your mother feed herself? Oh, yes. She's fine at the table. Right. Continence is next. Does she ever wet herself? Well, that happens quite often. Probably because she doesn't like using a bedpan and she can't get to the bathroom. We have to make sure she has an incontinence pad. Does she ever show signs of confusion? Occasionally, yes. Sometimes she thinks I'm her sister. Last night, I heard someone moving around downstairs and when I went down, I found Mum in the kitchen. She didn't know where she was. We laughed about it afterwards. Does this often happen? No, very rarely. Unit 8. Listening 1. A diabetic patient. The new patient has had diabetes since childhood. He's not, say. Uh-huh. He has type 1, then. What's that? There's type 1 diabetes and there's type 2. Type 1 usually appears before the age of 18. Does he inject himself with insulin? Yes, daily. Uh-huh. OK. He's on a special diet, is he? Yes, but he's not overweight. No. Type 1 diabetes is not linked to obesity. So obesity is linked to type 2, is it? Yes. Type 2 is the common one. This patient has a special machine to check levels of glucose in his blood and he shouldn't eat sugar, right? Well, no. It's not true that diabetics shouldn't eat sweet things. Actually, what's important is balance. A diabetic, like your patient, should eat the same amount of food at the same time of day. He needs to count the calories in his meals 
and he should have snacks, not big meals, especially before bed. Oh, why is that? To avoid hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. Not enough glucose in the blood, right? Right. Unit 8. Speaking. 1. 1 meter 80. 2. 95.7 kilos. 3. 5 feet 11. 4. 211 pounds. 5. 1.8 times 1.8 equals 3.24. 6. 95.7 divided by 3.24 equals 29.54. Unit 8. Listening 2. An eating disorder. Right. Um, the new patient's name is Anita Josephs. Anita is 16. Mm -hmm. She fainted and an ambulance brought her in, so we are keeping her in for a 48-hour observation. Right. Now, Anita is very underweight. She weighs 38.8 kilos. That puts her BMI in the danger zone. Yes. Now, her mother believes she has anorexia. She told me about Anita's personality changes and mood swings. A typical teenager. To a point, yes. But Anita is obsessed with dieting. Mm -hmm. She doesn't eat, so she gets stomach pains, frequent constipation and attacks of dizziness. What does Anita say? She says she feels miserable all the time, but she doesn't know why. However, she doesn't believe she has a weight problem. <laughs> she told me that she eats the same as everyone else and she doesn't think her weight loss is abnormal. However, she does say she has difficulty sleeping and is losing her hair, and she has also stopped mm. having periods. Unit 9. Listening 1. Blood types. I want to show you what happens if you mix the wrong types of blood. Now, in front of you, you've got test tubes with different types of blood in them. The blood in one test tube is type A. Now, who can receive blood type A? A patient with blood type AB. Right. So AB can receive type A. But can B receive A? What happens if you give type A to type B? Now, there's some type B blood in the second test tube. If you add a drop of type A, you'll see how they react together. Now, put a drop of the blood on a slide and look at it through the microscope. The red blood cells are joining together. Yes, that's right. We call that clumping. Now, the blood stops moving if the red cells clump. And, of course, if the blood stops moving, the patient dies. Now, if we put a little of blood type O into more type A, we'll see the difference. And what do you see now? The red blood cells are moving. The blood looks OK. Right. You can give type O blood to all the other blood types. So, if we have an emergency, we usually use type O. It's the universal donor. Unit 9. Listening to a blood test. How do you feel? Tired all the time, really. I never have any energy. Have you had a blood test before? No, I haven't, no. How much blood will you take? Oh, just enough to fill the syringe. Just five milliliters. Well, we've got the results of your blood test. 
as I thought you are a little bit anemic. Is that bad? No, not necessarily. It just means that your red blood cell count is a little on the low side. A normal count is about 4.2 to 5.4 million red blood cells per microliter of blood, and yours was 3.9. Oh dear. What does that mean? Don't worry. Anemia is very common in women. If you take iron supplements, your red cell count should soon go up. The cells are normal in size and shape, so that looks good. Your white cells are a little high, but you've just had a sore throat, haven't you? Yes. Well, that's just a sign that your body's been fighting the infection. So that's fine. And platelets were normal. Unit 10. Listening. Report of a death. When I visited Mr. Jacobs on Monday, he was going downhill fast. He was conscious most of the time. His hands and feet were cool. His arms were pale grey. He spoke, but not to us, to people we couldn't see. At about four o'clock, he tried to get out of bed and fell to the floor. His breathing was restricted and noisy, so I gave him oxygen to help him breathe. And you saw him on Tuesday too, didn't you? Yes. By Tuesday, he was unconscious all the time. Irregular breathing, sometimes a pause of a minute or more. He took no fluids and no food, so there was no urine. Mrs. Jacobs and I turned him regularly. And when did the end come? The end came on Wednesday morning. Mr. Jacobs was no longer breathing. I called Dr. Simpson and he pronounced Mr. Jacobs dead at 10 o'clock, the 7th of July. Unit 10. Writing. Did you hear Mr. Webb died last night? Did he? Oh dear. He got a lung infection, didn't he? Yes, two weeks ago. He was receiving treatment for that, but he actually died of a heart attack. Really? What caused it? A blood clot. Right. He had AIDS, of course, didn't he? When was he diagnosed with that? Six months ago, and he was HIV positive for five years. He started suffering from depression at about the same time. Unit 11. Listening 1. A hygiene report. Ah, sister, I need to talk to you about the hygiene inspection. OK. How was our score? Mm, three out of ten. Oh, dear. Well, they came at a very bad time, mid-morning. Mm. Uh, I have the report here. Uh, just run through the important things. Under ward hygiene, door handles are not regularly cleaned. Beds are not always cleaned between patients. Um, Toilets must be cleaned three times a day, but they're only cleaned once a day. Uh, Floors must be cleaned four times a day, but they're only cleaned once a day. Under spillages of bodily fluids, the report says that the average time was 35 minutes to clean up a spillage of urine. And it says nurses' knowledge of MRSA is good, but... They always wear gloves. Not good enough, it says here. Nurses must wash hands before putting on gloves and after removing gloves. Well, we certainly need to improve, but we are very short-staffed. Hmm... Unit 11. Listening to... Test results. Hello, Ward 5. Hello, uh, this is Peter Forbes from the Path Lab. I'm phoning with Sandra Browning's results. Hi, Peter. Good news? I'm afraid not. I can confirm it is MRSA. We have identified the bacterium. It's MRSA clone 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Mrs. Browning has an infection in her right hip, correct? Yes. Well, we tested her urine and blood and took throat and nasal swabs. First things first, blood, high white cell count. OK. Negative for E. coli, but positive for Staphylococcus aureus. 
We tested this Staphylococcus for resistance to antibiotics. Mm -hmm. These are the results. It is resistant to cefazolin, penicillin, and methicillin. We also tested for resistance to erythromycin, clindamycin, and tetracycline. All positive. Uh -huh. However, tests show the bacterium has a susceptibility to mupiricin. Mm -hmm. Also, the bacterium is not resistant to vancomycin and oxacillin. Okay, I've got that, Peter. Thanks very much. Unit 12. Pronunciation. Posture. Unemotional. Hallucinations. Manic. Paranoia. Disoriented. Uncommunicative. Delusions. Irrational. Depression. Unit 12. Language spot. Have you changed the patient's dressings? That's the first thing on my list. No, I haven't done them yet. Mrs Erickson's blood pressure needs to be taken. Have you done that yet? Yes, that was the first thing I did. What about Mr Suzoko's temperature? Have you taken it? Yes, I've done that. It's lower than it was. It says here that somebody spilt their orange juice. Have you cleaned the floor? That's the next thing on my list, so no, I haven't done that yet. And Mrs Wong needs some tests. Have you taken a urine specimen from her? She's having a shower at the moment, so I haven't had a chance yet. Unit 12. Listening. A case conference. So let's move on. Next on the list is new patient Delroy Moseki. For those of you who don't know him, um, he is 51, admitted on Tuesday. Who is Mr. Moseki's nurse therapist? It's me, Doctor. Paul, thank you. Can you take over? Yes, uh, <clears throat> Delroy. The notes say that when he was admitted last Tuesday, he... Uh, appeared normal in his movements and posture. Mm -hmm. However, he didn't know where he was and what was happening. He avoids eye contact and has spoken to none of the other patients, as far as I know. Oh. Um, the night staff report uh, that he has some sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. He shouts out in the night and wakes other patients. I think he has auditory hallucinations. Yes, um, that's in the notes. He hears voices. Have you done any tests? Yes, the charge nurse on night shift has tested him. Mm -hmm. He names objects correctly, but forgets them almost immediately. He gets frustrated mm. easily and often cries. Ah. It's, it's also very hard to understand what he says. Well, thank you, Paul. Now, I'd like to ask some questions. Right. Mm. Now Unit 13. Scrub up. One. Your temperature is, let's see, 38.5. Two. Now relax while I measure your heart rate. That's 120 BPM. Three. Your blood pressure is 150 over 90. Four. The patient's respiratory rate is around 18 BPM. Unit 13. Pronunciation. 1. Heart rate. 2. Temperature. 3. Pulse. 4. Respiratory rate. 5. Blood pressure. Six. Vital sign. Unit 13. Patient care. One. Just pop this under your tongue. 
Two. Can you roll up your sleeve? Three. This may feel a bit cold on your chest. Four. Just breathe in and out normally. Five. Relax your arm for me. Six. Could you undo your shirt for me, please? Unit 13. Listening 1. A coma patient. I see you. Hi, Dr. Michaels here. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. How's our TBI patient? Mr. Forrester? Mm hmm. Mm, it's not looking good. He's still unconscious, Doctor. What's the blood pressure reading? BP is 170 over 120. Mm, much too high. And what was it at 20 hundred hours? 150 over 90. It started rising an hour later. At 2200 hours, it was 160 over 110. So, rising all the time. What about his ICP? ICP was stable at 20 at 20 hundred hours. But it rose to 25 at 2100. At 2200, it was 26. Now it's 27. Right. We must get his ICP back to below 20. 20 and over is too high. OK, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Unit 13. Listening 2. A scan. OK, Mrs. Murphy, just lie back on this examination table. Are you comfortable? Yes, thank you. Have you had plenty of water to drink? Yes, um, three glasses. Good. We need your bladder full. I'm putting some gel onto your abdomen. Mm -hmm. That helps the ultrasound work well. OK. Your notes say the baby has stopped moving, is that right? Yes, I'm a bit worried. And you're in the 22nd week of your pregnancy? Yes. Right. Well, the ultrasound scan is very simple. When I pass the transducer over your abdomen, it bounces sound waves off the baby's body, and it makes a picture here on the monitor. Then we can see if there is anything wrong. It shows up any abnormalities. A scan can usually show if the baby is a boy or a girl. Oh. Do you want to know the baby's sex? Um, yes, please. Okay. I'm passing the transducer over your abdomen now. Ah, here we are. There's the baby. Can you see it? It's not very clear. Well, here's the head. Can you see that? Oh, yes. And there's a hand, five fingers, and there's a foot. Can you see? Yes. Can you see the heart beating? The baby's alive and looks good. Yes, everything is normal. And look, a penis. It's a boy. Really? I wanted a girl. You did. Just a moment. Well, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to have twins, a boy and a girl. Oh. Unit 14. Listening. Patient medication. One. Let's start with Mr. Gupta. He's had pain all night in the lower abdomen. The doctor says he needs stronger pain relief, so he's prescribed 30 milligrams of morphine every four hours. Two. We've moved Mr. Gill to an isolation room as he has an infection in his respiratory tract. A new antibiotic may work, so we're giving him a 600 milligram infusion of clindamycin over a period of four hours. Three. Now, Mr. Sawyer. We have to encourage bowel movement, so a laxative could be useful. He has one tablespoon of metamucil, that's 15 milligrams three times a day. Four. Right, Mr. Thomas is on antibiotics for his skin infection. Cephalexin is in tablet form to be taken with food. 
250 milligrams every six hours. Five. Lastly, Mr. Chong. Mr. Chong receives an injection of an antihistamine every eight hours, 10 milligrams of dimotane each time. Maybe this will control his allergies. Unit 14. Patient care. 1. She needs to take two tablets twice a day for a week. 2. What dosage of penicillin is Mr. Oliver on? 3. How often does he need his medicine? 4. Give Mrs. Mubin one 0.5 mil eye drop in each eye every four hours. 5. He's on two tablets three times a day with water at mealtimes. Unit 15. Listening. Qi Gong. Can you cure illness without medicine or surgery? Energy healers say yes. Energy healers say they can heal without touching the patient. In the studio to tell us about energy healing is Amber Chesterman, who is a Qi Gong healer. Hello. Also with us is Professor Julius Silver, who is skeptical about Qi Gong. Hello. But to start us off, Amber, can you tell us about Qi Gong healing? Qi Gong is holistic. It sees illness as a problem of mind, spirit, and body, so the whole person is treated not just the illness. Right. And qi is important, isn't it? What exactly is qi? Qi is energy. Qi is part of everything that exists. Illness, you see, is caused by an imbalance of qi, and a qigong healer restores energy balance so that healing can happen. And you heal from a distance, don't you? Over the telephone? That's correct. I practice external qi healing. I speak to my patients by telephone. And you unblock their qi? Put simply, yes. Thank you. Professor Silver, you don't believe in qi, do you? No, I've found no evidence for qi, no. And yet energy healing does work, don't you agree? It does work sometimes, yes. So how do you explain it? We find a lot of evidence for a placebo effect. Uh, belief is 70% of any treatment. In other words, my hands can't heal you, but if you believe I have healing hands, then I can heal you by moving my hands over you. So, what's really going on here? Well, we do know that being completely relaxed helps us recover more quickly. So, you are saying that all I need is to relax and believe that you have the power to heal me? Exactly. My explanation is not as interesting as Amber's, but uh, we live in the 21st century and I tend to be...